Hi, it's Elise from The Pen and Brush and Co. Today I'm going to show you how to do a ray stencil with this beautiful stencil from Stencil Stash UK. Uh, this one is called Lace Flower Repeat. The pattern on this stencil repeats so that you can easily stencil over large areas continuing with the pattern. So to do this, you need a couple of things. First, you need your paint. I am using Pure Eco Silk Finish in the colour Jacaranda, which is the colour that I have used on the drawers. And then I'm going to be mixing it with some Pure Eco Cloud. Yes, I'm using silk and chalk. It's not a big deal. Um, but the texture finish works best with chalk paint. Also, make sure that you've got a rag or some paper towel on hand as well, uh, just to mop up any messes. To create our texture, we're using Pure Eco Texture Finish. This is a powdered product that you add into your paint to thicken the paint and to create that texture. It Last but not least, always have some tape on hand. You want a good quality painter's tape just in case you have to stick it to your already painted surface. You don't accidentally want to damage that. So always make sure you've got a good quality tape on hand as well. Texture finish works best with chalk paint, but I already have silk finish open. I've painted these drawers with jacaranda, um, but we are actually going to be mixing the silk finish, the jacaranda, with cloud in the chalk finish. Uh, so that combination still works really well. You just don't want to be using straight silk finish. It's got a self-leveling compound to it. Um, so it's going to spend the whole time trying to flatten itself, which is obviously not what we're trying to do here by creating this texture and by creating this ray stencil. So all I'm doing here is mixing the jacaranda, the silk finish, with the chalk finish. Um, I'm doing this to create a slightly lighter colour. I want my stencil to still be along the same tone line as the jacaranda, I just want it that little bit lighter. Um, cloud is a grey based white, which I think goes really well with the jacaranda. So I want my stencil to stand out, but not be in your face different. So I wouldn't put, say, black over this colour. I want just a little bit of difference. So I'm just mixing my paint. You will use a little bit more product when it comes to the ray stencil, and you'll see why in a moment. So just make sure that you mix enough of the colour for the entire piece. So in this case, it's two draw fronts. It is easier to mix your colour before you mix your texture finish into it. So texture finish is a powder product. You only use a little bit and it kind of feels like corn flour, but it's not quite as gritty. It comes with this handy little scoop. Um, so when you're mixing your product, for ray stencils, you just want to mix a little bit at a time and work it in. And just like you're folding a cake, making a cake, um, you want to make sure it's fully worked in. This way you're not going to have any lumps and it's going to be a nice smooth paste. If you are, say, filling a hole with it, um, you absolutely can just dump it all in and mix it. It will take a little bit more work to mix it. Um, but when you're using it as a paste the way that we are today, you want a smooth paste. So mix that powder in slowly and make sure it's really well um, combined. So once you've got your paint fully combined, you are ready to start stenciling. I like to use a kitchen spatula, the silicone ones. They've got a bit of flex and bend to them, which just makes it that little bit easier um, to get the paint and the product onto your stencil nice and easily. So now you want to get your stencil into position. Now. I'm actually going to cut off this edge of my stencil. It's just going to make it a little bit easier to line it up um, uh, when we go to reposition it to do the second bit of stenciling. So I, these stencils are super easy. Just use a pair of scissors um, to cut it, which you can see has now given us a nice edge that makes it a lot easier to line up. 
So I'm going to line up my edge to the edge of the drawer and to the base of the drawer. This is the easiest way to ensure that your stencil continues on nice and straight. This pattern you don't really notice if it's a bit wobbly, um, but some patterns you certainly do. So you do want to make sure that you're paying attention to the position of your stencil. This is where your good tape comes in. You just want to tape down a couple of spots just to make sure that it's held in place and that it's not going to move. It is definitely easier to tape rather than to hold it with your fingers. So now we're going to come in with our texture paste. So we're going to hold it with our fingers and we're just going to use our spatula a little bit at a time. Don't just plop it all on there, you'll end up with a mess. Do a little bit at a time and all you're going to do is gently wipe it onto your surface. I like to get it on all over and then wipe nice and evenly right over the surface to smooth it out. So you can see I'm just getting it in and working it into the stencil but I'm letting the spatula do the work. I'm not pushing with heaps of pressure. If you push with too much pressure, you'll actually end up with your texture finish seeping under the edges and you'll have a really big mess. So you do just wanna go really lightly and really gently. Let your paint, let the finish and let your spatula do all of the work for you. You don't need to rush. You do have a little bit of work time with this product about 10 to 15 minutes but keeping in mind when it's warm in particular the faster this paint dries um, it does start to really thicken as well so just keep that in mind as you're working but you do have have time so here what I'm doing is once I finish I'm just going start to finish and I'm just smoothing it down um, after this is fully dry I like to give it a really really light sand as well it's fully sandable um, just to make sure any sharp pieces, anything that's really sticking up and not looking that great is knocked back as well. But smoothing it down before you remove your stencil is the best way to help produce a nice finish. So to remove your stencil, undo all of your tape first and then you want to pick it straight up and out. You don't want to drag it at all because you'll drag that paste. So straight up and away from the piece and look how gorgeous that looks already. In between stenciling, I do like to wipe my stencil clean just to remove the excess off it. I just find that I get a nicer finish. I also like to wipe the back side of the stencil as well. It just makes sure that if there is any excess paste that is bled through underneath, that it's not then going to transfer onto my surface and create a mess. So I just use my spatula and I just scrape straight down it. This is all water based so if that's not working for you, you can just go and give it a rinse under the tap and it, when it's wet it's very easy to just clean off. So once you've got it clean, it's super easy just to line it back up. So for this stencil, the flowers line up on the edge of the stencil and one of the stems. So it's really, really easy uh, just to pop it straight into position making sure that I'm lining it up along with the bottom edge as well so it continues fairly straight. So this one's in an awkward position. It's too hard to tape. Obviously, I can't tape onto the wet surface, so I'm just going to hold it there with my hand. It's a little bit awkward, but you will find as you start to get the finish on, it sort of just holds itself there. Don't let it go, but it's, uh, it's fine to continue just sort of holding it lightly with your hand. So again, I'm just going to wipe it on and then I'm going to smooth it off as well and then I'll show you it lifting. If you do accidentally make a mistake when you're removing your stencil, you can wipe the product off while it's still wet or you can sand it off as well. So it's not the end of the world if you do completely stuff it up. Um, now, once this is fully dry, it does uh, need to dry overnight. It does need a full 24 hours to dry. But once it's dry, you're going to come in with a nice, fine sandpaper, anything from 400 grit up, and you're very gently just going to sand over it and smooth out any bumps. Thanks for watching. I'm Elise from The Painted Brush & Co. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for all of our upcoming tutorials.